One of the things that did occur, you mentioned uh, Silicon Valley Bank there. There was a big bump in terms of Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies around about that time. And it seemed like one of the first periods where people genuinely saw crypto as a store of value, as a way to just, I, I need to put my money somewhere that I feel is safe. And given the last 18 months of what's happened with crypto, considering that as that's the place I'm going to store my assets in order for it to be safe, I think said quite a lot about how people sort of perceived the state of the dollar and the security of banks and stuff at the moment. What What's the role of Bitcoin or cryptocurrency in a, a, the current economy in your, in your eyes? Um, I think um, <clears throat> cryptocurrency or Bitcoin um, doesn't move in a reliable way related to almost anything. It's, uh, you know, moves up and down because of um, this mood and that move and mood. Um, and um, unlike gold, let's say, I, I would prefer gold and, and I would prefer crypto for various reasons. Crypto, um, it, it's very easy to track the owners and transactions in it. It's not liked by the government. Um, it's, um, it, 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 it doesn't move in a way that's consistent with, you know, kind of any of the environments and it's a fairly, and it's a small asset class. Um, you know, we talk a lot more about it, but its size is about, you know, 30% of the size of Microsoft and Microsoft is one stock among many stocks. So, uh, it's given um, probably a lot more attention. Um, I don't know, uh, uh, you know, who, who knows, maybe, you know, there's some element of it. I don't understand why people are more inclined to go to Bitcoin than gold. Um, if you look internationally, um, gold is, uh, for central banks, the third highest reserve asset. First is dollars, then euros, then gold, then uh, Japanese yen. Um, and central bankers are buying gold and they're not buying um, bonds. And um, and so, and it's, you know, timeless and universal. It's been there. So, um, but, um, you know, um, so I'm not, I'm not a big fan of it. As I've said before, um, you know, having a little bit, I have a little bit of it, but if you have a little bit of it, you have to um, think about the, those things and, you know, like I said, you know, you have to be prepared for it to fall a lot, you know, if, if it goes down 80% or something, but that limits the amount that you can have in it. So I don't know. It's, um, I don't think a lot of Bitcoin. I think what's interesting there is holding crypto essentially has a cognitive load on you, using it as uh, somewhere that you're using for investment as a store of value to just put assets that you've got it's almost that there is a price that you pay because of the volatility, but the price that you pay is with your own sanity with regards to that, um, which is something that I hadn't quite considered. There are uh, less sanity sapping uh, forms of investment. Yeah, that's a, that's a good way to do you know it. I mean, I've seen so many people, you know, I've seen people get very rich and I've seen get, people get very broke with it. I have friends um, in both camps, yeah. So, you know, we've spoken about today this very quickly changing, highly volatile environment that we're in, whether that be socioculturally, politically, globally, locally, financially. Where should people go in order to find um, some solace in this, given the fact that it is difficult? It's difficult to exist in this world. Um, go to go to places or spend time where there's not as much of this junk going on, you know? Um, I mean, first of all, I think recognize let's, let's go to some of the basics. Um, what do you really need? Um, you, you know, you need a bed to sleep in, you need food to eat. Um, um, most, depressions, most people remain employed, most wars, most people don't get 
die or get in injured. Um, uh, so, um, you know, let's put, let's calm down and put all this in place, but let's be in places where there's, um, you know, goodness and harmony and beauty, you know, maybe you spend more time in nature or, you know, you go out there and, um, I'd like to meditate, meditate is meditation has had a big effect on me. So, um, yeah, um, don't get all stressed about it, you know, navigate it well, um, and, you know, enjoy life, enjoy those things. And I think that that's, you know, that, I think that's most important. What would you say to the people that say, how am I expected to enjoy life when there's all of this chaos going on? There's so many bad news stories and headlines. And what about the financial collapse? Well, um, first of all, if it's really having that impact on you, don't get so hung up on the financial stories and, you know, don't, don't watch the television or something, you know, go out for a nice walk and <laughs> in the nature, like all that story, you don't really need all that story. Okay. Now what's going to happen to you? Like I say, um, you know, don't get so hung up on expectations of having the most amount of money or whatever. Just, you know, think about it. Um, like I say, where wh will you lose where you live? Will you, you know, um, what matters, you know, uh, your friends, your family, your, um, you know, give a bed to a good bed to sleep in for adequate food, right out into nature, you know, like I, I th my own view is sometimes, you know, like the most luxurious thing I can do is take a tent and be out in a beautiful spot, you know? Um, so, um, you know, don't avoid it. Uh, you know, don't, don't get stressed out, you know, understand it, be prepared. Redefining success and what happiness means and what we should be aiming for in life, I think, is a, a very worthwhile pursuit. Right. I'll, I'll tell you, um, this idea of success being uh, measured in the amount of money and status you have is really screwed up. Um, um, like, if you think about money, and, and this is... Uh, shown in measures of happiness, um, past a basic amount of money so that you don't have uh, the misery, there is no correlation between the level of money you have and the level of happiness you have. Lots of studies show that. And the highest correlation is do you have a community? Um, that's the highest source of um, happiness and also it, longevity. It has a big effect on longevities. Stress. More than smoking, more than stopping alcohol, more than going to the gym and exercising. Right, right. And so, uh, and then you think like, what is money for? It has no intrinsic value. It only has a value of what it buys. And so um, it has a limited marginal ability. You it, it, it benefit, you, you add more and more to it. And, you know, like, what are you going to do? Okay, so you're going to get a bigger house or a bigger car or what, what do you, you know, okay. Um, and what does that really mean incrementally relative to spending time with friends and family and all of those things? You know, most of the good things in life are not expensive, right? Um, friends, family, uh, nature, sex, anything, you know, it's not going to get better with more money, right? Materially better. And so um, it seems to me that um, it then can become an obsession. Um, and that's not healthy. So I think it's, you know, by and large, you handle it well, and it's all going to be okay. Um, it's all going to be okay. What's happening, people? If you enjoyed that, then press here for a selection of the best clips from the podcast over the last few weeks. And don't forget to subscribe. Peace.